This is the 415ers podcast brought to you by the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Please download the Odyssey app, subscribe, uh, rate us while you're there. Also, check us out on the YouTube channel for 95.7 The Game. Subscribe and like while you're there. That's Mark Randy. I'm Evan Giddings. And uh, the next part of this episode, Mark, I kind of want to get into the, the stability of the 49ers right now. Because as much as we're talking about the quarterback room and whether it's open for interpretation on an open competition or a closed competition or who's going to be quarterback two and quarterback three and all this stuff. Uh, it does feel like the, the, the kind of overall theme to me from not only John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan's pre-training camp pressure, but also day one of camp as we're getting ready for day two is everything seems to be set pretty much outside of the quarterback position and even the quarterback position right now with the news of Brock Purdy being cleared and ready to go is pretty set. So the question that we came up with was, is this the most stable that the 49ers have been in the Kyle Shanahan era? What would you say to that? Um, I would say this was what happens when you get healthy, specifically in in the quarterback room. Um, I mean, the 49ers, everything that they're telling you is that they absolutely love their four quarterbacks. They love Brock Purdy. They're incredibly encouraged by what they've seen from Trey Lance this offseason. Again, the some of the wild comments about Sam Donald this offseason, and then specifically over the last two days, what Kyle Shanahan has said about Brandon Allen. He said, again, on, on Tuesday, uh, when answering a question about how difficult it might be to split up reps for the quarterbacks, he name drops Brandon Allen, who, who was not you know, really involved in the question uh, and just says he he deserves some reps. And then uh, yesterday on, on Wednesday, if you're listening to this on Thursday, on Wednesday, he was asked by Eric Branch about keeping four quarterbacks uh, and, and had a little bit of a back and forth. I want to play that for you because I think it is illuminating into how this team feels about all four of their quarterbacks. Here's Kyle Shanahan uh, from Wednesday. When Purdy is like a full go and is practicing all the time, do you still envision having full quarterbacks here? Yeah. I don't believe you've ever done that before. I know you touched on this a little bit yesterday, but is it just because Brandon, Brandon Allen you think is talented enough to stay in? Yeah, I mean, we wanted three in OTAs. Um, we had two for the first part, so we want to add it to three, and um, we really liked him so far. So, um, you know, we don't, don't want to just get rid of guys we like. So that's Kyle Shanahan talking about Brandon Allen, but specifically about having four quarterbacks on this team. He he later would go on in an interview with Mike Silver. This is from the Chronicle to say, "quote If you have three quarterbacks good enough to make teams in the NFL, you always keep them." And then that's why what I'm happy about, because I think we've got four right now. You don't see many people keep four, but it's been done before. He would later say uh, his dad, Mike Shanahan, did it when he was with him in Washington at the very end of his dad's career. And he would say, but you can't do it too long because it impacts your roster. Uh, so I think the 49ers quarterback position, while it is full of questions in terms of who is playing and who is getting these reps, I think it is quite stable because, you know, maybe this is Kyle Shanahan hyping his group up more than they deserve to be. I don't know. But the way that they're being talked about, Evan, it really makes it seem like the 49ers really, really like all of their options at quarterback. And I cannot tell you the last time the 49ers felt that way about four different guys, let alone maybe even two different guys uh, in their quarterback room. Yeah, I mean, I, look, the quarterback room is potentially less stable than other parts of the roster, but I think it's it's a pretty clear cut, um, at least the, the starting point. I think there can be some shuffling, but but to me also, I just think you know the stability of the roster to me is is something that that jumps out because of not only how stacked it is, but of how veteran laden the majority of those impact positions are surrounding the signal caller. So. You know, getting a chance to see Fred Warner making plays on defense in on day one of training camp, getting a chance to see Brandon Ayuk make a fantastic leaping grab over Diamador Lenore, just kind of like sets in my mind just how ready and stable the rest of this roster is. And to me, you're going to have to go back probably to the 2018 entering 2019 season if you're looking at, okay, from the top down, quarterback, here's the positions that we have. Here's the competitors that we're looking at. But the majority of those guys were young. Now, with a few more years under their belt, with a few more deep postseason runs on their ledger, 
And this is a team that feels to me, Mark, like they're already ready for the regular season. Like they are already locked in. And I think even George Kittle referenced the kind of countdown to the next Super Bowl with what, 203 days or something like that. Like that's the kind of mindset that this roster has at this point. And to me, it starts with the top, obviously Kyle Shanahan. He is now in his, you know, he's got seven seasons now. And you're also looking at a front office that has been stable. Sure, there have been some guys that have come and gone as far as coordinators, members of the front office that are now on to better, bigger and better. But the majority, everyone to me, Mark, kind of the, 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 the foundation of the 49ers, both in the front office and on the field, appears to be the most stable that it's been in the Kyle Shanahan era. And that's how it should be, honestly, with the fact that he's been there for quite some time. He's had a chance to build it up. He is now, a, it's it appears, found his quarterback for this season and ideally ones for the future. Um, so right now, yes, absolutely. I feel like the 49ers are in their most stable place that they've been under Kyle Shanahan. And I think an example of that stability is the situation with Nick Bosa right now, which I think if it were any other NFL team or, or at least a lot of other NFL teams, you have your star player on their defensive side of the ball, perhaps your most important player on your football team, uh, and he's holding out right now. But it's not really described as that by the 49ers, even though that's officially what it is, because everyone, absolutely everyone, has full confidence that a contract is going to get done. It's only a question of when. Again, I would put like the over-under on the final day of July. Does it get done before the, the calendar flips to August? We'll find out. But it's going to happen 100%. And I think as that is at, uh, an example of the stability one from a, a chemistry standpoint, from a locker room standpoint, from the confidence that if you're one of our guys, we're going to pay you and, and we're going to get you taken care of. But then, two, just in, in terms of the roster and the way they've built this thing from the ground up with Nick Bosa, with Fred Warner, with George Kittle, with Debo Samuel, with Brandon Ayuk, getting acquisitions like Trent Williams and Christian McCaffrey, pairing that with your, your quarterback and in Brock Purdy or, or whoever else it is. So uh, I think you can see that stability in that sense as well, because Evan, if say, say this was, I don't know, the, the, the Dallas Cowboys and Micah Parsons, who's a fantastic defensive player was awaiting his contract extension. Not to say that the Cowboys are poorly run or anything, although Niner fans wouldn't mind if I did say that, um, but say he was holding out and you know, he's going to be eligible for an extension coming up in a year. Um, how would that be discussed differently nationally? I know this was a national story and it was picked up. If you were watching NFL Live on ESPN or Sports Center, you saw, you know, Niners don't expect Nick Bosa to report to training camp until he gets a new deal. But really, no one is freaking out over that because of the 49ers track record. I mean, three years ago, George Kittle, August 13th, 2020, signed his new extension. That one was relatively late. I remember there being a little bit of concern over that. But the next year, Fred Warner, July 21st, 2021, signed his extension. Last year, there was so much drama early in the offseason around Debo Samuel. But guess what? He signed his extension July 31st, 2022 of last year. The 49ers track record of success in locking up their important homegrown and home developed guys uh, is incredibly impressive. And that's why um, you don't really expect much issue with this Nick Bosa contract, despite the fact that John Lynch said it's a little more complex than some of their more recent ones in the past. Um, but I think this whole situation, how we all expect this Nick Bosa thing to play out, I think speaks to the st stability you're talking about, um, because you, you wouldn't quite feel this confident uh, in a team that, that hasn't proven to be as stable as the 49ers. So I think they deserve a little bit of credit for that as well. Yeah, I mean, the complications to me just surround the fact that it's going to be a record-setting deal. Like, in any anytime you're resetting the market, it's going to take a little bit more time, a la George Kittle, who became the highest-paid tight end in NFL history when he got his deal. Fred Warner, the same. I think up until, I forget which, which linebacker, um, was in the similar range. But then the one, of course, Debo Samuel is not a, a record-setting deal, but it did take some time. Um, that, that That's the only concern, I guess, for for Nick Bosa that I have. And it was made a story just because I think I think he was 
he's going to get fined fifty thousand dollars every single day he doesn't report. So it's technically by definition a holdout, which is the way that it's framed. Uh, but it really is because of what you're talking about, which is their track record of getting their guys signed. And I expect that to continue.